if you are a fan of Skinny Puppy, more specifically a vocalist who is a fan of Skinny Puppy, then uh, hang out with me for a couple minutes. Uh, I'd like to, uh, to share a few things with you. I recently um, started working with uh, Universal Audio Plugins and have been uh, uh, trying to recreate some of my favorite vocalists' uh, uh, sound or vocal effects. And of course, one of the most intriguing is uh, Ogre from Skinny Puppy. What I have done is um, created a few uh, vocal tracks, grouped them together, and I have ripped a instrumental version of both Rash Reflection and uh, Nature's Revenge, both from uh, Too Dark Park. If you have just a few minutes, hang out with me. I'd like to uh, just kind of sing these little parts for you. If you're a Skinny Puppy fan, you already know the way that they sound. When I'm done, I'm just going to go over uh, my vocal routing and the effects chain that I used, which I uh, got in the past when I uploaded a, uh, a video I did for uh, Spasmoletic. Um, in any case, here we go. This is the, the here's the the instrumental parts just so you can hear it. There's a little bit of uh, ogre like the the EQ kind of dips because I used a program that kind of rips the vocal out. If anyone has the actual instrumental versions of um, any of the Skinny Puppies uh, Two Dark Park tracks, please by all means share them with me. I'd I'd, I'd be stoked. Uh, specifically these two, Rash Reflection and uh, Nature's Revenge. So in any case, here's what I'm kind of singing on top of. And, and then I'm just kind of singing on top with this. In any case, that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm just going to go over Nature's Revenge just very, very briefly, and then I'll go through my vocal chain uh, with you if you are uh, if you have any interest and you're still sticking around. So again, there's my uh, there's my effects. Um, there's a the vocal sound. Um, if you're hanging out this long, you're definitely a Skinny Puppy fan, and you're definitely a uh, a vocalist who's interested in checking out the uh, the effects routing. So uh, let me just uh, click over here real quick. 
Okay, so essentially what I've done, I hope I have the right screen pulled up for you here, and I hope you can see this okay. But essentially I have the, um, the instrumental tracks in the top. I'm just gonna minimize these. I have a group with three different vocal tracks inside. The main vocal track is number one. I have a effects routing on that by, uh, primarily I'm using universal audio plugins, but, but not exclusively. So if you see here, here's my vocal rack. I'm using a, 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 just a, a gate, the V76. Let me pull this up so you can see it. This is a really good, uh, just gives you a nice crisp overdrive. Behind that, I'm using the SSL uh, EQ and then the MXR flanger, which is really, really nice and, and works well for, uh, for the skinny puppy stuff. Behind that, I'm using the Lexicon Reverb. Audio is going from the first track being routed into the second track before the effects. So what's happening is when I'm singing with my mic, there's actually three different tracks being heard or recorded all at the same time. Each of them have their own effects routing. If you see over here to the right, if you're familiar with Ableton Live, there's a little, mul a couple multi-second offset from one to the next. Uh, it really does sound great. It's nice for um, for harmonies and that type of stuff. Let me show you the effects routing on the second track here. Same thing, I've got a gate below that uh, Waves Red 1.7 here. That's giving me a real nice overdrive and a little bit of sizzle. Um, behind that, I have the uh, UAD Century uh, tube channel strip. And this, I think, is a key uh, key ingredient for the vocal sound that I'm getting. And again, I've got the MXR flanger doubler coming after that and then most important is the uh, eventide uh, h949 the third track is a little bit different here i'm using the um, arturia it's just a compressor i just was literally running through it and plugging in what i thought i needed so i wouldn't teach any of this in class i'll say that but uh, uh, in general i guess skinny puppy really isn't known for following rules and, and using gear the way it should be either so in any case we've got a compressor again the flanger h49 is coming right after that there's a different setting on this one here i've got the uh, vocal synth 2 and i've got the vocoder sound on but it's not really giving me a vocoder sound it's um how to explain it it's almost like adding like a, a little lfo um to the vocal a real tight lfo almost like if you guys are familiar with taking a delay you know if you take the delay milliseconds all the way down it gets really tight and becomes metallic uh it's a little bit like that only with an lfo um anyways i've got the ams which i really like a lot i mean if you're into uh like I, i'd really like this on drums more than anything but uh, if you're like a 1980s fan, this is the sound for your, your drums. Uh, and then below, below, behind that, I've just got another, uh, uh, another compressor just wrapping everything up at the end of that chain there. So um, that's really it. That's my three sounds. That's my three vocals. Oh, one more thing. I do have some things routed to sends. I have a Lexicon reverb on the first track, which I'm not using much of. I don't think on anything you can see. No, I'm not using it anywhere. I have a gate and a delay. And what that does is if I'm whispering or I have a lower voice, there's no delay. If I shout or scream, the delay kicks in. And this seems to work perfectly for uh, for this material. It, it's just actually, it's actually perfect. And I don't have to do any automation or programming or anything. If of course I were recording this stuff, I would spend a lot more time and, and, and do a lot more work for it. But this was just for live, this is just for practice and for fun more than anything else. Then I have a Decimort and Radiator behind that, and that's, again, just adding a uh, distortion, but what it's doing more than anything is adding this uh, this high-end distortion. There's nothing on the low end. Let me see, I could probably just put it right here on this track here, let's see, so you can hear it. Check, check, one, two, and then you hear, see, there it is. So that's what the Decimort and the Radiator are doing. I can make it sound robotic a little bit uh, just by doing that and then there's my delay and there's my see the tight reverb it's just creating more of a room than anything okay so if uh, again let me just click back over here so you can see what's going on again uh, so anyway so if you're uh, uh, if you're a fan and you have any uh, questions 
or more for me, more importantly would be if you have any insight uh, or any tricks or anything that you would suggest that I could do better. I'd appreciate it. That'd be awesome. Uh, any feedback as well. And I uh, hope to see you guys at the, uh, at the tour coming up uh, here uh, pretty soon. Anyways, uh, I'll, I'll be at the Tampa at the, uh, the St. Pete and, uh, and hopefully the Fort Lauderdale show as well. Anyways, hope you all have a good, uh, great day and uh, thanks for hanging out. <laughs>